Okay, so I'm recording the session para doon sa mga hindi makakapasok today, no? So, let's just uh, quickly run through our schedule, no? So, I hope you had a wonderful break, no? And ready tayo for the second half of the SEM. And right now, nandito tayo sa Taguchi Method, no? So, ito yung i-cover natin for today. And we'll be covering two parts, no? Kasi usually sa triple ME14, we have Uh, roughly, dinivide natin yung, yung Taguchi method into two parts. No? Yung Taguchi 1 and Taguchi 2. Taguchi 1 is mostly ano, uh, determining kung ano yung um, significant factors. While Taguchi 2 uh, aims to optimize those factors na nahanap natin. Okay? So, um, <coughs> and hopefully, makakover natin uh, yung two parts ato for today. No? I think, cover naman kasi medyo mabilis tong Taguchi no. Hindi siya ganoon ka complicated or hindi ka ganoon kadami yung uh, steps na kailangan gawin no. So uh, we should be able to cover it. Okay? Tapos ang remaining na lang natin na lesson na merong assessment is <coughs> sorry. Ang merong ang remaining lesson na may assessment is actually linear regression and RSM no. Uh, SPC will be, again, supplementar lang to and extra credit yung activity dito. Okay? So, uh, then the remainder of the SEM, i-dedicate na natin sa project natin, no? which will be after uh, May 13. After May 13, puro project updates na lang tayo. Alright? So, uh, let's go to linear regret. Ah, sorry. Taguchi 1 and 2, no? So, ito available naman sa inyo. Okay? So, si Taguchi technique and uh, I'll, leave you, uh, I'll leave it to you guys para basahin to in more detail. No? Pero the gist of Taguchi technique is um, th there is uh, this, I forgot if si Jinichi Taguchi is an economist or engineer. I forgot his profession now. Pero Um, si, si Jinichi Taguchi believes in what he calls as yung robust, er, robust design approach. No? Wherein, hindi siya masyadong uh, parang concerned dun sa mga nitty-gritty details of or yung, yung mga hinuhold um, dear ng mga, ano, no? ng mga uh, statistical purist. Kung baga, para sa kanya, um, you can... You can focus on those things, no? Kasi uh, eh, parang yun naman yung parang proper na statistical approach. Pero uh, he noticed na parang it's better na mag-focus ka dun sa mga high-impact na areas, no? So this can tie to um, something that we you learn later on the line, no? Sa METI 149, no? Wherein uh, may tinatawag kasi na Uh, Pareto principle, no? Uh, and this Pareto principle states that uh, 80% of the results are actually only due to 20% of the causes. So, ulitin ko. So, parang sometimes this is known as the, ano, no? The, the law of the, uh, wait lang. I forgot the, nakalimutan ko ano yung, para mas common name niya no pero it's uh, uh, gist niya is that only a few factors lang talaga ang nakaka-affect doon sa or ang malaki yung impact doon sa results no so ang estimate is 80% uh, of the results are caused only by or are affected by only 20% of the are due to only 20% of the effects no so th this ties in with the Taguchi method no para sinasabi na na instead of mag-focus tayo sa buong ano yung buong parang spectrum focus lang tayo doon sa malaki yung impact so parang meron siyang quote that is uh, para something like uh, would you rather have 100% improvement in 3 to 5 years or gusto mo ba 80 to 70 or 70 to 80% improvement in just 6 uh, months para ganun So, medyo engineering approach si ano no, Taguchi method. 
And again, some statistical uh, mga purists, uh, um, they they don't like the Taguchi method. No? Kasi parang, in a manner of speaking, parang may mga shortcuts kasi siyang, uh, kasi siyang ginagawa. No? Pero as engineers, um, we, we value the ano, no? yung, yung input ni Taguchi uh, when it comes to... Uh, Uh, statistical design no and actually uh, itong taguchi method was uh kumbaga, naging popular siya at the time when japan was uh kumbaga, rebuilding no after the world war nagre-rebuild sila and they became a powerhouse in terms of ano no yung quality of products production mga ganyan so doon in effect yung taguchi method okay so uh wait lang Dr. Jinichi Taguchi. So, I think he was into mechanical engineering. No? Parang yun ata yung ano niya, profession. Uh, but I'm not quite sure. Mechanical or electrical engineering. But in in, in any case, uh, let, let's look at how we actually do the Taguchi method. So, it's similar to um, similar to ANOVA. Meron pa rin tayong ANOVA table na ginagawa and we still determine the significant factors. What's different is that hindi actually natin gagawin lahat ng combination or treatment combinations. So if you remember from full factorial designs, no, uh, hopefully you still do. Uh, yung full factorial designs, kunwari, um, we are having kunwari, three factors tayo, no? three factors like factors A, B, and C. Usually w- what we end up doing is that uh, kailangan i- i-test natin lahat ng permutations for those uh, combinations. No? So, for example, if it's, <clears throat> sorry, if it's 2 to the 3 na factor, a full factorial design that is uh, high and low level lang, no? so two factors lang, high and low, ang mangyayari is we'll have to do eight experiments. Tama? Pero what if we we want, instead of doing a screening experiment, gusto natin mag-optimize na rin. No? And if we were to optimize it, kumari, three three levels tayo, three to the three, that becomes 27 experiments. No? So from eight experiments, magiging 27 experiments siya. Okay? And, and that will eat up a lot of resources. So um, if you notice some of the, I don't know, uh, dun sa treatment combinations natin, and we, when we do table of signs, or when we do Yates technique, tapos hinahanap natin yung mga sum of squares natin, Um, mapapansin natin na maraming higher order interactions no and if you remember from last yung, yung fractional factorial design is meron tayong tinatawag na sparsity of effects principle no na parang ang, ang underlying na, na concept is that uh, all or most in any process it is mostly dominated by main effects and um, and at most two low level interactions lang no so yung mga high level interactions like three factor interactions four factor interactions parang hindi na siya masyadong significant in in most cases sa uh, ano no sa in any given process or kung significant man siya sobrang late lang ng possibility or probability na mangyari yun okay so um that said parang mas maganda na o, o kumbaga may, merong mga ek- dun sa treatment combinations natin, madaming nasasayang, no? nasasayang experiments kasi we, kumbaga, dahil sa sparsity of effects principle, parang we could assume na hindi naman talaga makaka-affect siya. So, um, uh, what, what the Gucci method does is, is similar to fractional factorial design in, in which parang binabawasan natin yung number of experiments. So, all the while, uh, yielding uh, parang good statistical results. Okay. So um, in Taguchi experiments, we, we make use of orthogonal arrays pa rin. And these orthogonal arrays are available in, in, ano, no? in textbooks, in um, online sources. Makikita nyo siya. And usually it has this form, no? itong L sub A uh, quantity B to the C. L sub A here refers to the, uh, A here refers to the number of experiments. No? So if you see something like L sub 9, that means that you have total of 9 experiments. B is the number of uh, levels for each factor and C is the number of factors. Okay. So let's look at, uh, for example, ito. Ito yung mga different na, ano natin, orthogonal arrays. And if you use something like <clears throat> Minitab, 
kunwari a mini tab is uh, again a, a statistical software no, na that can do automatic calculations na um and i believe mini tab is the primary choice where sa pagkapumasok kayo sa industry no most uh, industries use mini tab uh, ano ba yung iba uh, some also use design expert but i think mini tab is still the i don't know dominant na uh, program So if if you want to check it out, maybe you can look at a student version, no, and look um and and try it for yourself. Pero um we can also easily uh, achieve uh the results using Excel as well. No? So if you look at this, eto um pag sinabing L8, yung ibig lang sabi niyan is that you have eight total experiments. Eto L9, nine total experiments. L18 is 18 total experiments. And so on and so forth. Okay. So what it looks like is something like this. No, these are just some examples of the orthogonal arrays. So this is an L4. Uh, so that's four total experiments. So four experiments. And we have two levels per factor and uh, we have three factors. So if you do a full factorial design, no? if you remember full factorial design, two to the three would mean uh, eight experiments. Yeah. But in Taguchi, uh, in Taguchi designs, you cut it in half. No, Instead of three, Uh, uh eight experiments or eight runs mangyayari is four runs na lang yung kailangan mong gawin okay so it saves you a lot of time no lalo na pagka uh, ano to you are kunwari prototyping a new um method kunwari then or optimizing a meth, uh, process then taguchi design is is perfect for that no then you have uh for example ito 2 to the 7 if it's a full factorial design 2 to the 7 design that, uh, that's uh two levels for seven factors that should give you ano man 2 to the 7 128 ba tama nga ba 32 ang 5 64 ang 6 tama 128 no if my math is correct then you have to do 128 experiments no individual experiments yun and that's not including the replicates pa no so imagine if meron pa kayong replicates now for taguchi design pwede niyang i-cut from 128 runs magiging 8 runs na lang siya. Okay? So um you, you can see how much na, na trim yung ano no yung mga number of experiments. And this is uh, again because uh, nagba-bank on tayo sa sparsity of effects principle no na ang main effects yung dominant na ano na na factor na nakaka-affect sa response variable natin. Okay? And we have uh, another example here. This is an L9, 3 to the 4 design. And usually, ito yung, uh, for, for, uh, at least for ano, no, triple ME14, when students do this uh, Taguchi design, usually L9 yung, yung choice, yung primary choice. No? Kasi uh, it's three levels. It has a good number of levels. No? Tapos, it has also a good number of factors. No? You have four factors that you can play around with. But um, if this were a full factorial design, then there dapat, 3 to the 4 yung gagawin mong experiments. So, so 3 to the 4 is... What is 3 to the 4? Uh, 27, 3 to the 3. So 3 to the 4 is 81. So 81 experiments. Uh, from 81 experiments, you bring it down to... Uh, you, or you trim it down to just 9 experiments. So, so it's, again, very effective. We also have some hybrid... Na, no, no, um, I don't know if... May pinakita dito. Uh, wala pinakita no pero meron actually mga hybrid na ano no na Taguchi orthogonal arrays no wherein kunwari some factors are two levels, some factors are three levels. May mga ganun no. I, I forgot the exact name. Uh, hybrid nga ba 'yun? There, there is a specific name for it no pero um in in Triple ME14 hindi na natin masyadong uh, tinitingnan na yon uh, na yon pero you can also look into it no if if you really want to uh, play around especially kung feel niyo um, magiging useful siya doon sa ano niyo sa sa study niyo okay okay so that's the orthogonal array and uh, let me just parang highlight ko ano yung ibig silang sabihin ng orthogonal array no so this is uh, ano lang los no? kung mga ito yung layout ng treatment combinations na gagawin natin So, if you look at it, uh, ito, these are the factors. So, kunwari, this is factor A, factor B, and factor C. Tapos, ito yung different levels for those factors. So, for example, sa experiment 1, this is uh, similar to the yung quantity 1 na, ano, no, 
na na run wherein naka low level lahat. Okay? So low 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 tapos eto uh, experiment 2 will be low high high. Okay? Tapos eto high low high and this is high high low. Okay? So uh, notice na merong mga missing dito no. And again, uh, may missing dito ng mga experiments. It should be eight experiments ng full factorial siya. Missing siya because again, tinrim daw natin because we feel or or yung the design is uh, geared towards uh, removing any parang quote unquote redundant na experiments so yung experiments that don't actually yield uh, kumbaga relevant results or hindi naman non relevant results i mean kumbaga hindi masyadong impactful yung yung kumbaga um, yung magiging results from those from doing those runs no okay So um we have tapos tingnan natin yung mga three four uh itong L9 no where in na meron tayong three levels so ito uh, you do experiment number one, tapos you do one, 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 tapos ito naman 1 2 2 2 tapos ito 1 3 3 3 so it's it's uh placed in in a specific order no so uh kumbaga ito kailangan yung sundin tong experimental runs na to and it's arbitrary no na hindi kailangan na kunwari may four factors kayo hindi kunwari lang pH, temperature, um, let's say acid, uh, pH, temperature, uh, time tapos uh, stirring. Kunwari ganun yung factors natin. So hindi kailangan na hindi nagma-matter no kung nilagay mo si pH dito sa factor 1, nilagay mo si stirring dito sa factor 2, pH dito and um, time dito. It doesn't really matter no. Kapag uh, kahit binaliktad ako uh, kumbaga binaliktad niyo yung arrangement niya it will still give you the same results no so huwag kayong mag-alala doon no um ayto ay yun nasagot na pala yung tanong ni Kenneth no so so yun so okay lang kahit uh, arbitrary yung assignment niyo dapat same pa rin yung makukuha yung results and maybe we can try a little later no uh, try natin pagbalik ta rin yung mga uh, factors testing na natin kung uh, mag may effect pa siya doon sa ano sa results. Okay? Kaya ba natin gawin 'yun? Kaya siguro si try natin mamaya. All right? So <clears throat> let's do uh an experiment so maybe I can So ito yung general steps. So select uh selection of the output or target parameters. So this is our just the I don't know, yung factors na kailangan natin. So or ito yung kumbaga response variable I mean. So ito yung response variable na kailangan natin i gusto natin i-optimize. Uh, tapos we identify the input parameters and their levels. Uh, so this is kung ano yung mga factors based on our knowledge of the process no kung ano yung factors na nakaka-affect doon sa ano sa response variable natin and we identify kung anong gusto natin kung gusto ba natin na uh, optimization siya then therefore we need to have more levels or gusto ba natin na mabilis ang identification lang kung ano yung significant and non-significant so we can do two levels lang pag ganun okay Uh, so we determine the suitable uh, orthogonal array so based on kung ano yung napili natin dito pipili tayo ng orthogonal array which is again this one no? yung L sub A B to the C tapos we assign the factors and uh, interactions to the columns of the array again hindi na nagmamatter no kung ano yung uh, arrangement dun sa columns na yun it will still give you the same results then we conduct the experiments so we do the actual experiments record natin kung ano yung response variable attributed to each of the experimental runs then mag uh, statistical analysis na tayo uh, after statistical analysis natin um, we compute what we call as uh, the first statistical analysis na gagawin natin is to compute for yung ANOVA table natin to determine kung ano yung um, yung significant factors no and we could also include yung percent contribution no meron uh, Taguchi also has a formula para ma-compute natin yung stat, uh, percent contribution ng ano ng ng bawat uh, source of variation no? then after that we go to signal to noise ratio calculations and the signal to noise cal noise ratio calculation or um, SN ratios are uh, 
are used to determine kung ano yung optimum setting for each of the factor levels. No? And um, after doing this, uh, usually nagpa-perform tayo ng confirmatory experiments using the optimum settings no? uh, to, to well, confirm kung tama nga ba yung uh, settings na yun that can produce the highest na, na yield no? or highest na response variable. Okay? So, uh, let's just uh, straight into it, no? Uh, kuha tayo ng isang example para makita nyo kung paano siya ginagawa. Uh, ano pa magandang example dito? Okay. I think this is a good example, no? So, let's uh, look into this, no? So, meron tayong XYZ, welding company wishes to improve the welding process by reducing or preventing uh, broken welds. Excel mo na ako. Saan mo na Excel? So again, uh, si welding company daw wishes to improve their welding process uh, by reducing or preventing any broken welds. No? So uh, meron siyang seven main factors na naka-identify that could increase the weld strength. And uh, ito yung na-identify niya, no? yung frequency, pressure, alignment, fixture, linear amplitude, weld time, joint type, and welding direction. Okay? Tapos for each uh, factor, uh, nag-identify sila ng two levels for it. So, it's a high and low lang. So, this is a sort of screening experiment. Okay. And uh, based on this, uh, we determine the appropriate na orthogonal array. No? And in this case, uh, yung L sub 8, 2 to the 7 yung, yung design. No? Or simply, minsan tinatawag lang to na an, an L8 design. No? So, kasi, um, if you look at the tables, konti lang naman yung L8 na experiment. So, in fact, baka isa, isa nga lang yung L8 experiment and it corresponds to the 2 to the 7. But if you want to ano, be more precise about it, L8, 2 to the 7 yung uh, tawag sa kanya. Okay? So, ito yung L8, uh, 2 to the 7 experiment natin. So, it's uh, ito yung design niya. Tapos, um, when we conducted experiments, ito yung magiging results niya. No? Dito siya. Okay. Right. So, uh, try natin to. So, let's get the copy this table and hopefully ma copy paste natin siya. No? So, let me So, let's paste it. Uh, ang ito yung format. Eh, no? Let me try to redo that again. No? So, mukhang kailangan kong kopyahin row by row to. So, copy nyo na lang row by row class. No? As a later, papakita ko sa inyo kung paano siya pwedeng split up. No? Hmm. Curve 6. Experiment 8. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin para easily mas split up natin, no, no? We'll use uh, text to columns. So, so, if you look at this, pwede natin select yung row na to, no? Select natin siya. Tapos, punta tayo sa data na ribbon. So dito sa, sa top ribbon, merong data tab. No? Tapos hanapin natin yung merong button dito. Ang tawag sa kanya is uh, dito sa text to column. Although may suggestion pala si uh, Shane. Scuff pag pinipaste sa Excel. Paano yon Shane? Can you elaborate kung ano yung before I show this method, baka mas easier yung method mo. Diyan ka ba, Shane? Baka may mic problem si Shane. Sige, mamaya. Uh, maybe Shane can share with us the method na kung paano siya 
pinipaste. Pero ito, this is what I usually do, no? Uh, these types of data. So, I just select the column na gusto kong i-split uh, up. Tapos, select ko text to columns. Then, I just choose delimited. So, kung baga, kung paano ko gusto hatiin. Pwede rin actually fixed with, no? Um, if, if fairly sure ka na magla-line up yung mga different na results mo. Pero, what I do is delimited kasi I know that every value is separated by a space, no? So, pwede ang, gusto, ang gagawin ko is, ang delimiter ko is uh, space, no? Parang ganyan. So, um, dito sa results part, medyo mag, mag, uh, may konting bab babagawin lang ako. Pero for the most part, na-split up ko naman into the different na, ano, no? Value siya. So, if I do finish, nandito na siya. And ito si results, this would be one column lang to, no? Results, thread, Tapos lagay natin siya sa dulo. Tapos ito actually move natin one column to the right. Kasi ito run order to na. Runs. Okay. So meron tayong uh, values dito na. Okay. So if you know any method na mas, mas easier than that, no? uh, you, you can apply it. I know, makapit ko meron pang mas magandang method dito na. Pero this... Uh, uh, this is how I've been doing um, yung mga from PDF to Excel. No? Okay? So, uh, we have this, uh, meron tayong run order, meron tayong results. Tapos, ito yung different levels natin. No? So, to compute this, um, kailangan natin gumawa muna ng response table. No? So, let's do a response table. So, ang laman ng response table is just, um, and I'll keep this columns dito no? kasi para mas madaling makita uh, let's just do a horizontal na table no wherein yung mga values na input natin is um we, we drag it to the right no per, pa, kung baga pa column, columns yung ano natin instead of yung usual na naka vertical wherein row by row yung factors i think this it's easier that way no so ang gagawin natin is um we have uh this first response table is yung level 1 natin Okay, that was level 2. Okay, so two levels lang naman kasi siya. So we just do level 1 and level 2. If you have three levels, then you can add another three levels here. No? Okay, so two levels lang tayo. And what we'll do is, we'll use the sum if function. No? So gagawin natin is, sum if, um, idadagdag natin lahat ng, and this is how we do, if you remember pinakauna, no, yung ANOVA, this is actually how you do yung manual na ANOVA. Okay? So, kung, kung hindi yung one-click method yung ginamit nyo, yung data analysis tool pack, uh, ito actually yung method kung paano natin ginagawa si ANOVA, no? how we compute for sum of squares. Okay? So, gagawin natin is sum if, i-add natin yung range na to, if yung criteria natin, if, uh, ano, sorry. Dito pala. So, ito, Pipiliin natin to kasi ito yung kumbaga ito yung kumbaga if tool natin if that makes sense so so ito check natin if yung values dito is equal to yung level natin dito okay so if it's equal to that then we add whatever is uh kumbaga yung the corresponding na response variable dito sa side na to okay so parang ganyan siya so again uh, ang gagawin natin is Sa lahat ng values dito sa columns na to, if the factor is uh, in level 1, then we add them. If it's not level 1, hindi natin i-add yung values niya. Okay? So parang ganito siya. No? So that's sum if this column right here is equal to this level. And uh, what we'll add is, ito. ito. As, et, pag nakita niyo to class, no, if you look at uh, Excel, meron siyang... May mga arguments again. Ito, uh, ito yung formula. Tapos open and close parenthesis. Yung sa loob ng, ng, ng quantity na yan is the uh, arguments. no And pag may nakita kayong argument, ito, these are three arguments. no If you see an argument that has a, a square bracket, ibig sabihin nun, optional yung, yung uh, argument na yan. So meaning, actually kung hindi nyo nilagyan ng sum range, actually i-add lang niya to So mangyayari lang, i-add niya itong 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Pero since uh, ayaw natin yung gusto natin, ito yung i-add niya, kaya naglagay tayo ng itong optional na na argument na to. Okay? So, uh, we, we can 
See na 346 yan, no? So that's just and to double check kung 346 nga ba. Pwede natin select lang ito, no? Uh, this is uh, all level 1. So nandito siya. And if you look at the bottom, and this is how you do it, no? Nakaharang nga tayo yung mukha ko. Uh, wait lang. Okay, ko. I-reposition ko lang yung mukha ko. No? Yan. So ito, if you look at the bottom right corner, no, may nakita kayong uh, value dyan. Nakikita nyo nga ba? Meron dyang 346. So that's how you do uh, quick ano, no, uh, addition. Tapos meron din dyang count, meron din dyang average. So if you want to, uh, kung hindi ayaw nyo mag-type ng formula, gusto nyo lang ma-check ng mabilisan, you can actually do, ano, no, just check it through the bottom right corner, itong quick statistics na to. Okay? So 346 naman naman and I want to be able to drag this I don't know drag this to the right drag this to the left pero if I just simply drag it to the right nangyari is actually nagmo-move yung ano ko no reference cells tama kasi um pag uh, Excel is smart enough to just move the reference cells when you drag your formulas no but we don't want to do that ang gusto kasi natin is smart din yung pag-move niya so we'll make use of the dollar sign so hopefully you still remember the dollar sign no So kung lalagyan mo ng dollar sign, ibig sabihin nun, or kung magpa-press ka ng F4, ibig sabihin nun, i-fix mo yung isang value. Okay? <clears throat> Whether that be a column or a row. So dito sa case na to, gusto ko kasi if I move, if I drag this to the right, gusto ko mag-move yung column. Tama? Pero if I drag it downwards, ayaw ko mag-move itong blue column na to, itong blue array na to. Tama? Ayaw ko siya mag-move ng paganyan. Gusto ko lang siya mag-move ng paganyan. Okay? So meaning, ang if fix ko is the numbers. Tama? If I fix the numbers or I place a dollar sign be behind the numbers or before the numbers, that means na never magmo-move yung, uh, yung, yung rows niya. Magmo-move lang is yung, yung columns. Okay? Tapos dito naman sa itong dito sa A11 na to, um, opposite naman yung gusto kong mangyari. No? Ayaw kong mag-move siya left to right. Pero gusto kong mag-move siya up and down. So, therefore, ang i-fix ko is yung columns naman. So, that's column uh, dollar $A yung gagawin ko. Tapos dito, sa sum range ko, ayaw ko mag-move at all siya. Tama? Kasi dito, uh, gusto ko parati ito yung ina-add ko. So, uh, whether I move it to the right or move it to the left, gusto ko fix siya. Or move it to the right or move it up and down. Uh, gusto ko fix itong column na to. So, what I'll do is, uh, pwede kong lagyan ng dollar sign lahat. So, Uh, well, you can also press F4. No? If you press F4, automatic itatoggle niya yung mga choices. So, you, for example, yung first na F4 mo will give you dollar sign parehas. Second F4, uh, naka-dollar sign ng row. Third F4 is naka-dollar sign ng first na ang, ang letter. Tapos pag dinollar, and F4 niyo ulit, bubura siya. So, it's a toggle. No? So, you can toggle in between. So, ako, uh, what I'll do is I usually just press F4 kung gusto ko na quickly ma-dollar sign parehas. Tapos kung gusto ko mag-specify na, uh, pwede kong manually ilagay na yung dollar sign. Okay? So, uh, kayo na bahala kung, uh, uh, kung paano nyo gustong gamitin siya. No? Okay? Tama si Shane. No? Useful talaga si F4 dito sa Excel. So, if you press enter, now notice na if I drag it to the right, drag it downwards, and drag it downwards, Tama na yung ano niya, no? So, if I look at this, uh, let me double check. Ito, tama yung column niya, tama yung, uh, tama yung array dito, tama yung results, tama din yung levels. Tapos, if I look at something like nandito, tama naman yung levels, tama din yung columns, etc. So, okay na siya. It becomes extremely fast, no? When you uh, do these kinds of things. Lalo na pag um, sobrang daming runs, no? Kasi, uh, uh, ako, I always advise students to to take advantage of this function of Excel no? that you can just drag formulas as uh, opposed to just manually typing it all over again. No? Lalo na pag sobrang dami nyo ng factors and dami nyo uh, rows and columns. No? Okay? So now that we have uh, our I don't know, itong response table natin, ang gagawin natin is we create a I don't know, um, and let's call this as response table totals no? because later on we'll have another response tables no? which are the averages. So these two are responsible totals. Pwede natin makompute na yung SS no? or sum of squares. 
Uh, but before we compute for sum of squares, uh, we need to compute for correction factor. No? Again, uh, para siyang yung first ANOVA na ginawa natin, no? yung pinaka-basic na ANOVA, wherein manually natin kinakompute ang sum of squares. So, the correction factor is, this doesn't change, no? Uh, it's equal to sum squared, ano, correction factor is the grand total sum and you square it and divide it by the number of uh, experiments. No? And in this case, it's eight. Or you can do, uh, just you can do count. So I, I like to do count now because um, uh, minsan tinatamad ako mag, ano, no, magbilang kung ilan sila. Uh, tapos uh, I always feel more confident. I think I've mentioned this before, no, dun sa, kahit dun sa, uh, sa higher ANOVA, tsaka sa yung factorial design. No? I, I just like, I feel more comfortable kung count yung ginagamit ko. At least, kasi pag, uh, kunwari, something may missing row pala or may missing column, uh, automatic, kumbaga mas mabilis kung makorek yung, ano no, kung, kung dynamic yung formulas ko, it's e always easier to correct everything. No? As opposed to yung naka-hard code siya na kung naka-hard code to ng 8, tapos yung pala hindi pala 8. Tapos since, uh, if I'm trying to correct everything, uh, pwede kong ma miss, ano to no, ma ma kumbaga, makalimutan to. So I just like to do count no? just just as a safety precaution. Okay. So uh, let's do sum of squares na ngayon. So the sum of squares is, uh, hopefully you still remember it, we, we do sum square ng, um, ng rows natin, which are uh, yung different of the different levels. No? So ito si factor A, uh, variation niya when you set it to level 1 and variation niya when you set it to level 2. So yun yung sum square natin. Tapos, uh, we divide it by the number of uh, individual values that uh, make up the uh, itong subtotal na to. Okay? So, if you look at it, itong 346, hopefully, uh, again, this was discussed in ANOVA, the first ANOVA lesson. So, you, hopefully, you should still remember this. The denominator will always be kung ilan yung bumubuo sa subtotal na to. So, kung ito, 346 comes from four individual values. Tama? So, that's uh, from this 79, 91, 84, and 92. Okay? So, kung four individual values siya, dapat over four yung ano natin, yung magiging uh, denominator natin. And okay lang i-hard code natin ito kasi hindi naman magbabago itong ano na to. For the orthogonal array na pinili natin, always over four siya. Tama? In the same way na kunwari, yung L9 yung kinuha natin, um, over 3 ata yun. Kasi parang uh, 9 experiments tapos 3 levels, tig 3 yung ano natin, yung number of rats. Isa pala yun sa properties ng orthogonal arrays. No? Dapat equal yung number of, uh, uh, let, let me just, uh, no, no, before I show you na equal sila, uh, let me continue by solving this for formula no so we have sum square eto over yung denominator number of uh, individual na data points na bumubuo sa subtotal minus the correction factor yeah, that is your sum of square so uh yung orthogonal arrays uh, let, let me circle back no yung orthogonal array na malalaman niyo tama yung orthogonal array if the number of um if the number of tatawag dito number of uh, levels are the same. no? So for example, ito, uh, this is level 1. There are four level 1s and ito, there are also four level 2s. So that's an orthogonal array. No? And you can notice that dito rin, all of the, all of the experimental runs share the same property. No? So kung sa F na, na run, you have 1, 2, 3, 4 na level 1s and you have also four level 2s. And if we look back at, kunwari ito, Let's look at uh, one with three levels. So, uh, let's look at L9. Maganda yung L9. Ito, let's look at L9. No? If you look at si L9, each uh, level has three na runs. No? So, kunwari, level 1 has three runs. Uh, level 2 has three runs. Level 3 has also three runs. And if you look at itong mga, ito, particularly ito, no, medyo jumbled na siya. 
Level 1 is 1, 2, 3, tatlo. Level 2, 1, 2, 3, tatlo din. And level 3, 1, 2, 3. If merong isang factor or isang level na hindi equal uh, with the other levels, then probably baka may mali kayong copy-paste no? dun, uh, dun sa orthogonal array na, na pinili nyo. Okay? Dapat, th that is one property of orthogonal arrays. Dapat equal yung number of levels. Right? So let, let me go back. Ito, right now, hindi ko pa pwede madrag to, no? kasi hindi ko pa na-set up yung parang mga uh, dollar signs. So dito, I want this uh, blue array right here to move uh, left and right, but I don't want it to move up and down. Therefore, dollar sign natin dun sa numbers okay? or sa rows. Tapos etong correction factor, I don't want it to move at all kasi gusto kong uh, fix siya parati. So I can do F4. Okay? Now I can just move it to the right. And that is my um, that is my sum of squares for all of the uh, factors, no? And notice na uh, nawala tayong sum of squares for the ano, no? For the um, for the interactions. Uh, because for one, uh, sobrang reduced na experiments natin and therefore makukulangan yung degrees of total degrees of freedom natin. No? So hindi siya enough. And in fact, later on, we'll do what we call as pooling. No? So pooling is when we um, pull the sum of squares of certain factors papunta dun sa uh, error natin para to, to have uh, pa para hindi negative yung yung sum of squares ng error natin kasi imposible natin makompute to kung negative yung sum of squares no so we will we'll have to do uh, pooling in this case no? okay so uh, if there were more runs no uh, then we can we we can uh, compute for ano no then possibly na makompute natin yung interactions kung meron tayong more runs, like for example, more trials. Similar to sa ANOVA, if you remember ANOVA, no? Kumari, yung two-way ANOVA natin. Uh, kung naalala nyo, kung without replication siya, hindi nyo actually compute yung interactions, nama? Pero kung with replication, kaya nyo na compute si interaction. Okay? So, the, the greater the number of replicates, the more degrees of freedom you have and the more information na kaya mong i, ano no, i ma, ma extract kumbaga. Okay? So in this particular case, you only have 8 runs tapos hindi pa siya replicated. Therefore, um, ang kaya mo lang ma-compute ma dito is main factors and if, and some of the main factors you have to pull. Okay? So let's do the ANOVA table. ANOVA table, it, this never changes, no? Same lang parati siya. So we have source, then you have SS, DF, MS, um, FTALC, and you have PVAL. So you can do f then if you want. Pero FICO, for me, PVAL is always just easier. No? Uh, less, less things to think about. So I just do PVAL and we do conclusion. Okay. So let's compute. And uh, I can probably do this. No? A to... Uh, so let's do A, B. And ito si copy paste ko na lang. So here's a trick you can do as well, class. No? If you press control, if you copy this, you can also actually transpose a, ano, no? uh, an array. So transpose means that ipagbabalik ta rin mo yung column and table. So if I do this, tas tinanspose ko siya, it will fill uh, the column instead of filling a row. No? So the transpose symbol is this one. No? So ito, na, 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 may error naman nakalagay na transpose. No? So ito siya, may arrow siya na parang sa bottom corner na oops. So my arrow siya, which means that uh, ita transpose mo or pabalik tani mo. So if you do transpose, click that, you'll notice na naka columns na siya or, or naka na, naka paste na siya in a column as opposed to dito na naka row siya. Okay. So that that could be helpful, no? Uh, when when you do these kinds of things. So ito, uh, again, pwede din natin gawin the same thing, no? So if you take the sum of squares, copy it. And we paste it. And dito, we, we need to paste it as a value, no? Tama? Uh, if you want to paste it as a... Kasi pag tinanspose mo to, pwede din naman, if you transpose it this way, uh, it will retain its, ano no, its its original references. So pwede, you can do it that way. 
ka, just copy this as transpose mo dyan. Or what you can do is pwede ring, um, pwede ring i manually equals mo na lang na ganyan. Since uh, arranged naman siya the same way. So this is uh, arranged alphabetically and this is also arranged alphabetically. Then walang issue. No? Magkaka-issue lang to sa, kunwari, yung mga factorial designs where you have Uh, ano no kunwari naka standard order siya if naka standard order siya usually iba yung arrangement dito sa ano kasi in the ANOVA table we usually arrange it na main effects muna then two way interactions then three way etc etc okay so um ito mga ano lang to no mga minimal na organizational na ano na nitty gritty stuff so you you can do it any way you want um fico i think it's enough na Uh, pagkaginan nito ko kasi ang problem yung sa ganito why I don't like to do this is because uh, baka may mali akong ginawa dito if binago ko siya hindi automatic magbabago to so uh, I think I'll, I'll just do ito no kasi mabilis lang naman i-equals ko na lang na ganyan so if ever I I notice na something is wrong here automatic magbabago naman dito okay so not, now that we have our main fa factors lagay tayo ng uh, error and we also do total so okay so total ang uh, total sum of squares ito hindi na naman nagbabago to we just uh, do the sum of squares ng lahat ng values minus the correction factor okay so again it's sum of square i notice na same lang actually ito sa kung paano natin kinuha to no may actually may divisor pa rin naman sa sum of squares so if you think if you really think about it it's just sum of squares ng ganyan pero yung divisor niya is actually just one kasi each value na sinasum square mo dito comes from only one uh, individual value so kaya technically parang over one siya parang ganyan okay so uh, sum of squares ng lahat ng to minus the correction factor gives you ss total okay so this is your ss total and degrees of freedom natin is uh, the total number of uh, observations minus one. So we have eight observations. So I can do equals count. You can do eight minus one or just do count minus one. But that it. So that's seven. Okay. Now, uh, ito yung tingnan natin, no? Why, ano yung issue ng uh, single replication na uh, Taguchi design, no? So uh, this is two levels per factor. So, lahat ng degrees of freedom nila is just 1. No? 2 minus 1. And if you do SS, uh, the degrees of freedom of the error, that's this one minus the sum of itong lahat. Now, what happens is, naka 0 siya. 0 no? degrees of freedom siya. Tama? It's 0 degrees of freedom because um, kumbaga um kulang yung number of uh, runs mo or kulang yung number of observations mo so that you can have a uh, value here dito sa error and in fact kung i the drag mo to zero din siya because this the total sum of squares is actually the to if you total the the sum of squares from each variation you will get the ss total lang din okay so this is where pooling comes into play no so ang ginagawa ng pooling is that Uh, hindi natin isasama yung yung parang and this comes with uh, practice na lang no kung ano yung ipopool mo um, ang, ang general rule is that the error should be somewhere along uh, the, the degrees of freedom of the error should be somewhere along one third to one half of the total degrees of freedom yun yung goal natin so if you look at this Uh, we have seven. Then, dapat dito somewhere along, around two to two to four or two to three yung kailangan natin i-pull. Tama? So, dapat three to. So, if you, to have three value, uh, to have a value of three, uh, a degree of freedom of three for the error, kailangan natin mag-pull ng uh, three values. no? And uh, to do that, ang gagawin natin is, kasi di ba SS, uh, if you look at SS, no? the source uh, the sum of squares is indicative of uh, its uh, ability or if i can call it that parang ability for it to become uh, significant tama kung mababa yung sum of squares mo uh, most likely magiging non significant ka okay 
kung relative relative to the other values mas mababa yung uh, sum of squares mo most likely non significant yung value mo okay so uh, ang gagawin natin we just remove for the the lowest values doon sa sum of squares natin okay so in this case ang lowest values natin is si g si f si c and si a okay sila yung pinakabababa g c and a actually have the same value ng 3.125 so ito we you remove 4 um which is uh, around half no so magiging half na yung ano natin yung degrees of freedom which is uh, okay na sa part natin so ang gagawin natin i can do Maybe I can format this. No, lagay natin ng red. So red natin meaning na pinul natin siya. So dahil pinul na natin siya, ah, uh, eto this is now be uh, this now becomes c to twenty six. This total minus yung natira na lang. So eto minus eto minus eto. Okay, so yun lang yung pinuwa natin. Kung bakit ni treat natin sila as if um kung ah. Uh, zero lang yung ano nila sum of squares. So what happens is yung sum of squares nila mapupunta actually doon sa error. Okay? So if I press enter, the degrees of freedom is 4. Tapos if I drag it to the right, this becomes meron na siyang SS no which is 10.5. And notice na if I add all the red no, eto, pag pinedit ko to 1 2 3 4. If you look at the total, 10.5 siya. So napunta yung Uh, pulled na uh, sum of squares mo doon sa error natin. Okay? So probably if you have uh, if, if you have more than one replicate then you don't have to do pooling no kasi magiging kung more than one replicate ka this becomes um uh, 16 minus 1 tama? Kasi kunwari two replicates ka, two replicates so that's uh, total observations mo is 16 minus 1 gives you 15 then 15 minus uh, 7 will give you 8 then more than enough yung uh, degrees of freedom mo for the error. Okay? So you don't have to do pooling. Pero since dito, one uh, replication tayo, we have to do pooling. No? Okay? So now, let's compute for the MS. So ito, MS is always SS divided by DF. So I'll just drag it down. Just remove ko na lang yung pinul ko kasi hindi natin siya i-compute. Yan. Tapos F calc natin is MS over MSE, which is the error. And let's do F4, no? Kasi the drag natin to. So I can do also do copy paste, no? Ayan. Oop, but na bold ko to. Okay. So yan. Yan yung F calc natin. Okay. So nandito na tayo. Uh, So, si Shane made a joke. Ang sakit naman ng sir. From relevant to non-significant. Uh, ganun talaga minsan sa buhay. No? <laughs> Pangyayari yun. Pero okay lang. So, ito. Uh, we have F-cut. So, gawin natin siyang... Uh, Compute natin yung P-val. No? So, from uh, F-cut, we do F dot this... Ah, no, sorry. Hello, we do f dot this dot rt. Nitong value na to. Tapos degrees of freedom one is yung degrees of freedom ni source divided by degrees of freedom two is the denominator, which in this case is the error. No, so ah let's fix the error because we know that it's no. And I can just copy paste or pwede rin drag ko to no, tas delete ko na lang. No, okay. So eto, eto na yung mga pival natin. Then we can make our conclusions. So we can have conclusion. We can do um, we can do if function. No, para mas uh, if, if this were many, pa din natin ni if function. So kung mare point zero five, we can do if this value is less than point zero five, then it's significant. Else, it's not significant. Yep, automatic na uh, Kenneth ask no. Automatic na if um if you pull your ano, your factors then non significant na yun. So ito not significant na ito. Kasi pwede natin ilagay dito sa formula no. Uh, if 
Ayan, di mahirap kasi zero siya eh. So, huwag na natin ilagay. I-manual na lang natin siya. Not significant. Not significant. Ay, by the way, it's it's pull, no? We are pulling. Pulling yung term. Uh, ipupull natin itong si uh, factors. No? Okay? Parang pulled standard deviation. Parang ganun. So, ito. Uh, not significant. And ito, i-drag natin ito. Actually, kaya ba natin siyang magawa? Uh, gusto natin na 0.05 pero yung 0 as well. para mahirap yung formula. Dalawang if yung gagawin natin. Sige, i-copy-paste na lang. Mas madali. Or, or in fact, pwede nga i-ano since konti lang naman to. Kaya na lang mag-decide no? maglagay na not significant, significant. Kitang-kita naman siya. No? Okay? So that's how you do uh, ANOVA. Uh, the first ANOVA for Taguchi Designs. No? And ito sa Taguchi Design, we also can compute for, usually no, may dinadagdag tayong to ano dito, we have what we call as the SS prime. SS prime is what we call as the pure uh, pure sum of squares. No? Tapos from the pure sum of squares, we can compute for percent contribution. No? contribution. Okay? So, percent contribution it gives us um, a rough estimate kung how much of the variation is attributed to a particular factor. Okay? So, nandito yung formula ng SS prime. Let me look for it. Ito siya. Uh, ito. So it's the SS uh, prime or the net na pure or the net or the pure sum of squares of a particular factor is just SS factor minus DOF of that factor multiplied by the MS error. Okay? So if you compute it, sino ba may SS prime yun ito? Equals si SS minus degrees of freedom niya multiplied by MSE, which is this value right here. Tama? And we do F4 sa MSE kasi uh, gusto natin pwede tayo i-drag natin ito. No? Okay? So if you drag that down and dito kasama, so delete lang natin. So we have, ito yung pure sum of squares natin. And you know that you've computed correctly if pag in nyo siya, oh wait, wait, sorry. Ah, okay lang pala. Okay. So, that is the pure sum of squares. Dapat yung pure sum of squares equal sa sa total eh. May mali ba akong ginawa? Ah, sa tama. Kasi we include the uh, Ay, tama kasi pure nga pala. Wait lang, class. I'm... Trying to look kung bakit not mag-equal siya sa ano. Let me check, no? Yung pinul niya is, same kami ng pinul, no? So, if you look at it, uh, nakapool dito si uh, ABC and FG kasi sila yung lowest. Ah. Pinul din niya si B. Okay. Okay, so uh, that is some of the way, uh, parang pwedeng difference class no? kasi ang ginawa niya is uh, pinul niya pati si B. Ah, uh, pero pwede namang hindi mo i-pull no? kasi enough naman to 50% naman na siya. So, okay lang. And in fact, nung hindi natin siya pinul, you'll see that yung result niya is not significant pa rin naman. So, same pa rin siya ang conclusion, no? Kasi ginawa niyang not significant. So, kaya magkaiba yung ano natin dito. Yung pure sum of squares. Pero, wait lang ha. 
Kasi bakit pag kinapi ko to? Dapat hindi zero to. Uh, the pure... Ah, sorry, sorry. Si SS error pala is just SS error prime. You don't compute it like the, I don't know, like the factor. Ang gagawin natin is we take the total tapos babawasan natin yung yung pure errors na. So, what we do is equals tong total minus the sum of etong ano. So, you can do this class, no? Kung, kung tinatamad kayo, pwede namang i-drag nyo lang ng ganyan kasi uh, Excel will ignore the blanks, no? Pero okay lang din to kasi sum lang naman ginagawa natin. So, plus zero will still be the same. No? So, okay lang. So, 18.375. Yun yung SS prime natin. Okay? So, um... Hindi same yung magiging result natin dito no kasi dito sa Excel kasi ang ginawa natin is hindi natin sinama si B sa pooling natin no where sa kanya sinama niya siya. So uh medyo magkaiba tayo ng sagot pero that, that's perfectly fine no. So kasi not significant pa rin naman yung conclusion natin dito. Okay? So uh we do percent contribution Percent contribution is just equal to SS prime divided by uh, the total. No? And let's do F4 and F4. And if you drag it down, you just delete this. You know, you know it's correct kung 100% siya. No? Sum niya is 1 is correct. So you can do times 100, no? pwede times 100, or you can just use Excel, convert you into a percentage. No? So you can do this. So, you can have something like that. No? So, naka-percentage uh, na siya. Okay. Um, may interesting question si Kenneth ito. No? How do you do uh, the computation of the response table kung sakaling marami kang response table, responses? No? Kung marami kang responses, then uh, what you do is, let's just say na ano, no? Uh, kunwari lang doble yung ano natin. And, uh, although, ito equal sila, no? Pero, Kunwari lang ganyan. So what you do is, kailangan mo ng isa pang ano dito. So we, let's just call this our replicate 1 and replicate 2. Yung gagawin natin is, isasum natin siya ng ganyan. Kunwari ganyan. Kasi... Tapos, yung gagamitin natin dito is, uh, instead of uh, itong replicate 1 and replicate 2, yung gagawin natin is itong totals. Okay. Pero bukod doon, so let's just do it this way. No? Parang ganyan. So, ganyan na siya. Pero sa SS, magbabago dito itong denominator. No? Kasi if you look at it, hindi na uh, apat lang yung values na, na bumubuo dito sa 692. Tama? That's correct. 8 na dapat. So, tama si Kenneth. No? It should be 8 because if you look at it, uh, each uh, itong 692 comes from eto this first replicate right here itong group na to plus itong group na to so 8 value siya so kaya magiging over 8 yung dito so bang ganun and you just adjust it no magiging over 8 na lahat okay tapos kung ano naman siya three replicates then it becomes over 12 okay uh, so let's just uh, redo that no so meron tayong ganun so if you check this over 100% uh, yung sum niya, this is correct. So, ito na yung ano natin. So, what this percent contributions uh, mean is that uh, we can roughly say that uh, factor B contributes to 2.8% of the variation that we observe in uh, the results. No? Tapos, uh, etong si uh, E has the largest contribution. No? So, it contributes uh, largely to the, to the variation that we observe uh, sa response variable natin. So, th this means that if we vary E, most likely, um, meron tayong 60% na variation na makikita uh, dun sa, or we, we, the variation that we observe in the uh, no, response variable is caused 60% by this factor E right here. And we can also see na si error, mataas din si error. No? 
fifteen percent we, we this is saying that um may, merong mga there are there is fifteen percent of the variation that is not accounted for kasi uh, account nasa error siya okay so that's uh percent contribution now uh before we proceed with uh no no taguchi to so that's the first half of the lesson no so uh we, in triple me 40 we just called it taguchi one kasi traditionally naka separate tong dalawang lessons na to kasi um uh, magkaibang exam sila no pero ngayon wala naman tayo ng exam so we just uh ano no uh bulk them into one lesson na uh before we proceed to taguchi 2 let's take a short break no uh 10 minutes okay lang ba so let's take a 10 minute break tapos balik tayo and uh tapusin na natin uh, hanggang uh, optimization na uh, in Taguchi 2. Okay, so I'll see you in 10 minutes. So it's 9.44 in my watch. So let's uh, restart at 9.54. Okay? All right.
Yes, sir. Ayun, thank you, Kenneth. Si Shane kaya. <coughs> And I'm resuming the recording. Siguro na dyan na rin si Shane, no? So, let's uh, start again. So, this time we'll do... Ano, no? Uh, let me... So, we'll... Do uh, signal to noise ratio para mahanap na natin yung optimized setting, no? So basically, what signal to noise ratio means, and and maybe you've heard this term before, before, no? Signal to noise ratio. What it essentially means is that um, when we are um, kunwari, uh, detecting something, no? Kunwari, if we detect, uh, let's just say, gusto natin detect yung radio waves. So any device. Uh, can detect uh, any device that is specific to detecting uh, radio waves can also detect yung tinatawag na background noise no now what makes a um, a detection uh, ano no uh, kumbaga effective kung gusto natin ng clean uh, detection we need to have a signal to noise ratio that is uh, high no so meaning if you were to plot it kumbaga kung magpa-plot, kung itatry natin na i-plot siya, if this is the noise, gusto natin na yung mga detected natin na signals is higher than the noise. So, if, ang mangyayari is, if kumababa kasi yung signal-to-noise ratio natin, so let's just say, ito yung noise, tapos yung signal natin is this one, then, sobrang indistinguishable niya, no? So, mahirap siyang ma-determine, no? And this applies to many things, like, for example, yung mga pag uh, AAS, kunwari, may signal to noise ratio din yon uh, when you do XRF yung mga analytical techniques natin they all have this concept of signal to noise ratio no? and this applies to uh, statistics as well no so this background noise here is caused by yung mga unknown variations natin while the signal here is caused by the main effects so gusto natin na uh, na as much as possible, gusto natin na pataasin itong signal to noise ratio natin. Gusto natin as much as possible, uh, maganda yung, kung, kung baga stark yung difference between the signal versus the background noise. Okay? So, to compute that, we we need to compute what we call as the signal to noise ratio. No? And ito siya, nandito siya. This is signal to noise ratio or just simply the SN ratio. No? So, um From the SN ratio, pwede tayo mag, mag, ano, magkaroon ng different formulas. So, uh, the SN formula for different scenarios will will differ no, uh, depending on what you want to achieve sa experiment. So, you can have something like, uh, you, ito yung three cases na meron tayo. No? So, we have the smaller is better case, we have the larger is better, and we have the nominal is best. So smaller is better na case is wherein gusto natin na i uh, minimize yung uh, yung response variable no. So uh, what are some examples of this? No? So let's just say na kunwari um, gusto natin ma-detect yung um, in in a process no. Tapos doon sa process natin gusto natin i-minimize yung um, number of defects. So kung gusto natin i-minimize yung number of defects, then smaller is indeed better for that case, no? for that particular process. Now let's just say na uh, opposite naman na kunwari yung, um, I think dito sa example natin ito, uh, meron tayong strength na hinahabol. No? In this particular case, tama ba yung, wait, wait. Hindi nyo pala nakikita. So in this particular case, sa ito sa first example natin ang results is uh, in terms uh, yung response variable natin is in terms of strength no gusto natin na pataasin yung strength so in this particular case larger is better kasi gusto natin as much as possible i maximize natin yung strength natin so that yung weld you can say this is a, a welding company no yung weld joint natin will have uh, will be stronger no and hindi siya magkakaroon ng mga defects Okay? So that is a case where you have larger is better. Now there is also a case wherein meron tayong nominal is best. No? And nominal is best is um, if you have a target na, 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 na performance. No? So usually nangyayari to sa 
yung may specifications. Like, uh, for example, I used to work in the lead acid battery industry, no? so Motolite. Uh, uh, and part of my job before was to, I know, to ensure that the lead, uh, the lead components uh, or the lead alloys have a specific amount of composition. I, I now forget kung ano yung hinahabol na composition. Pero there is something like, for example, may tin content kami. So tin content for the battery to be effective, dapat, and I'll just put in a number now because I, I, I don't quite remember the exact na, na composition. Pero let's just say 0.7 to 0.9. Okay, so uh, for the battery to be effective or within specifications, uh, then it should contain 0.7 to 0.9. Anything lower than 0.7 or anything greater than 0.9, e, out of specs na yung, ano na yun, yung composition na yun, and you have to make adjustments. Na. So either uh, pwedeng i-stop yung line para i-adjust yung composition or i-recall lahat ng uh, mga batteries na ganito yung composition kasi possibly magkaroon siya ng uh, failure. So, yung, yung mga ganong uh, issues, no? So, in that particular case, when you have a specific target for your response variable, then you use the nominal is best, okay? So, uh, when you use signal-to-noise uh, ratio formulas, uh, dapat uh, you need to understand kung ano yung hinihingi ng response variable nyo. So, what does the response or, or ano yung gusto natin mangyari sa response variable. Do, do we want to minimize it? Then we use smaller is better. Do we want to maximize it? Then you use the larger is better. And lastly, kung gusto mo mag-nominal is best, you're, you're targeting a particular uh, value, then you use nominal is best. Okay? So hopefully that clarifies. No? And, and later, let's look at some examples. No? Uh, Maybe we can skim through some of these examples and let's try to determine kung ano yung scenario niya. Uh, let's do... Ex yung one, we've determined na si example number one is nominal uh, higher is better uh, or larger is better. Tapos dito naman, in a manufacturing process, crew parts, excess, scrap costs are a major problem for company ABC. ABC decides to optimize the yield and determine two out of us for 42 factors now. Tapos, the problem-solving team decides to run a two-factor experiment. Ito siya. Sealant and oil. Tapos, ay, walang dinabi. Excess scrap cost. Uh, medyo lacking yung ano, no? Pero dito, based dito, uh, I'm assuming na itong yield na to is the scraps, no? So, kung maga number of scraps dun sa, ano. So, if that's the case, kung gusto natin na ma-minimize, kasi dito, essentially, kung gusto mo maging mas effective yung, mas ma-optimize yung yield, uh, therefore, gusto mo babaan yung excess na scrap. So, therefore, in this example, kung itong response, no, is this is, if this is excess scrap, then, uh, in this case, it's lower is better itong case na to. Okay? Now, let's look at example 3. Manufacturer of resistors wants to improve yield on subset, many of which have been rejected for thickness problems. They decide to run an experiment ganyan. Tapos, ito yung resulting thickness nila. Okay? So, um, in this particular case, hindi clear, no? Kung ang, ang rejection ba ng thickness is because under siya sa required thickness or over siya sa required thickness. So, we, we don't know yet. no So, hindi natin sure kung anong signal to noise ratio na kailangan dito. Uh, but, let me look ha. Kasi alam ko may continuation pa to eh. Ah, ito. Sa, so, ito. Same problem siya pero continuation lang siya. Parang sabi nila yung uh, manufacturer of resistors wants to improve the yield of substrate tapos rejected for thickness problems tapos sabi daw ang tolerance nila is 20 plus minus 4 so that's that means na dapat ang target nila is 20 kumbaga yung nominal target is 20 uh, plus minus 4 therefore meron tayong target and that is a case of nominal is best okay so in this particular problem I think these two are connected no? itong uh, example 3 and example for uh, for this uh, nagkaroon siya ng thickness problem kasi either uh, 
uh, masyadong manipis or masyadong makapal. Lagpas siya doon sa 20 plus minus 4 or that 16 to 24 na specification range. Okay? So, if that's the case, then nominal is best siya. Okay? So, again, just look. You need to look at the problem. Tingnan nyo, assess nyo siya kung ano yung hinihingi ng problem, ano yung goal ng 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 ano natin ano yung goal ng experimental run kung gusto ba natin di maximize minimize or find a particular target and from there pwede natin ma ma decide kung ano yung SN ratio okay kasi the SN ratio formula will depend on uh, ano no uh, pwede mali yung interpretation yung if you use the wrong SN ratio formula right okay so um word of warning dito class no and this is some of the mistakes some of the more common mistakes na ginagawa ng mga student is that um, yung et, etong smaller is better, larger is better, tsaka nominal is best, they take it to mean uh, the SN ratio themselves. no So, it's not the case. no SN ratio is always, we always want the SN ratio to be high. Okay. So, kumbaga, if we compute the SN ratio, gusto pa rin natin na pinakamataas na SN ratio yung, um, kumbaga, i-maximize pa rin natin yung SN ratio. Pero the way we maximize SN ratio uh, through the formula is different case to case kung ano yung hinahanap natin. So, hindi ibig sabihin na dahil smaller is better to, gusto natin na mababa yung SN ratio. Tapos dito, dahil larger is better, gusto natin mataas yung SN ratio. Tapos kung nominal is best, gusto natin yung SN ratio is uh, may target SN ratio tayo. Hindi siya ganun ha. Always, SN ratio should be maximized. Gusto natin, eh, kaya dito sa ano, if you look at the, ano no, uh, itong target, maximize SN ratio. Lahat sila maximize SN ratio. Okay? Because SN ratio should always be maximized if you want to optimize the process. No? Right? So hopefully that, that's clear, no? Uh, and later, baka mas makita nyo to in action, no? Uh, what I mean when when I say we maximize SN ratio when we go to the examples, okay? So I think it's better if we I don't know if we take another example, um, tapos start tayo with another Taguchi one, tapos uh, proceed tayo with optimization don sa uh, sa example nyan. I, I think example three would be the best, no? Example three and four, kasi eto sila uh, para makita nyo rin kung paano Paano mag-work pagka more than three levels and kung more than one replicate para makita na rin siya. And I've discovered something and you, you probably be happy about this, no? May na-discover ako na pwede nyo palang ma-copy-paste sa Excel derecho from PDF, no? May certain way pala siya. And maybe this is what Shane was alluding to earlier, no? So if you do, kumari dito, let's paste it here. Uh, if you look at the top ribbon, punta tayo sa data. Then, dito sa data, merong, naka, dito sa pinaka left side, no, may nakasulat na get data. We click get data and we do from file. Then, uh, we choose PDF kasi PDF yung ano natin. And we take note na nasa, kasi importante ito, no, nasa page 17 siya kasi Itong PDF file na ito, masyado kasi maraming data set. No? So, uh, it's uh, page 17. So, uh, let's just find the, no, no. So, this is my uh, PDF file. So, it depends kung ano yung data na i-extract. No? So, nakasave siya sa documents ko. So, if I open that, it will say connecting. Kung first time nyo i-connect siya, it will say connecting. Tapos, hanapin yun natin yung table na gusto natin. And ang uh, table natin was in page 17, no? So you'll notice na itong PDF na to sobrang daming table. Uh, page 17, so it's either this one. No, this is just the, ano no? Ito yung levels. Ito nga ba yun? I think this is the one, no? Wherein meron tayong replicate 1, replicate 2, replicate 3, and totals. So ito siya. Itong 17, ANOVA na ito to. 17 is, ano, ah, this is just the response table to. So ito. Ito yung kukunin natin. So we click this. Tapos double click lang natin and it should show us this table. No? Ay, mali pala yung ginawa kong transform table. No? Pwede ko i-close and load lang at adresyo. Ayan, naka-table na siya. So, ito na yung table natin. 
right? So, maybe that's a, uh, ano, no? uh, a quicker way to do it. Pero parang ayoko na meron siyang formatting, no? Um, pwede siguro tanggalin ko yung formatting. If you want, you can retain the formatting. Pero naka-pivot, ah, naka-pivot table pa siya. So, let me just copy this. Tapos, I'll paste it without formatting. So, values only lang ang lalagay ko. So, again, ang ginawa ko is naka-separate sheet naman siya. So, I copy copy it. Paste ko siya without formatting. But if you want the formatting, it's no no problem. No? So, values. So, nope. Anong nangyari? Nag-error. Uh, save lang muna natin. Baka maano to. Um, 2022. 0432. Stop lang muna. Ayan. Okay lang. Tapos values natin. Okay. Tapos I can delete this. Hindi siya na-delete. Sige, kayaan nyo na. Ayaw ma-delete. Parang, I think I need to restart Excel. No? Wait lang. Let me restart my Excel. Uh, mukhang okay na. So, ito. So, I've deleted the excess data. Na. So, ito, nakopy ko na. May zoom in a bit. Tapos, ito, pwede natin i-delete na lang siguro ito. Uh, let's just, this is runs. A, B, C, D. Tapos, uh, this is R1, R2, and R3. And we also have the total. So, total here is, pwede actually i-compute natin siya. No? So, sum siya na yung three values na to. Okay? So, let's do what we did earlier, no? And this time, medyo bibilisan ko na lang kasi um, medyo familiar na siguro kayo by now. So, let's do response tables and we do total. So. Okay? Tapos, uh, for this case, since, since this is an L9, um, L9 3 to the 4, Tama? So this means that uh, it's uh, three levels per factor, no? Tama nga ba? So let's... It's L93 to the 4. Tama? So that's three levels for four, the four factors. Okay, so L93 to the 4. So we do 1, 2, 3. That's three levels. Tapos, uh, we'll do some if. So ito yung tinatanong ni Kenneth kanina. Uh, now, what if more than uh, three rep, uh, more than one replicate? No, so what we'll do is some if itong range na to will be equal to this level right here. Tapos ang sum range natin is at totals naman tayo. So again, ito, I want it to move left and right, but I don't want it to move up and down. Therefore, sa numbers ko ilalagay or sa row. Ito, I want it to move up and down but not left to right. Therefore, sa letter or sa column ko ilalagay. And ito, I don't want this to move at all. No? So, i-F4 natin lahat. Okay? And press enter. Then we can move to the right and downwards. So, yeah. So, as to double check, let me just pick a random cell. Tapos, tama naman. Level 3. Ito, same, same. So that's good. Okay? So, meron na tayong response table totals. Now, we compute for correction factor muna. So, correction factor is uh, sum square ng, uh, no, so grand total. So, that's sum of the grand total. So, we can do this one or we can do this one. So, let's just do this one. Squared divided by yung count. No? So, this one right here. So, the total number of observations. Right? So we have ito ng correction factor natin. Okay? Now we can do SS. So that's equals sum square itong values na to. And each, again, each subtotal dito uh, is equal to um, tatlong run and tatlong replicate. So 9 dapat. So over 9. Tama? Kasi if you look at it, itong 194 na to galing to dito. 
sa 27, 16, 19 hanggang dito sa 28, 20, and 21. So, nine yan lahat. Oh, this uh, group right here. Okay? And, and, and that applies for ev everything as well, no? Uh, kasi orthogonal na rate to, uh, each na kumbaga, level is equal to or equal silang, equal yung number of levels per uh, column dito sa orthogonal na rate. No? So, therefore, nine dapat to. Okay? So it's over 9 minus the correction factor. And we can drag it to the right. So that's our... Uh, ay, sorry. Hindi ko na F4 to. Drag it to the right. And that is our response tables. Right? So we can now form our ANOVA. ANOVA natin siya. And let's just call this uh, ANOVA uh, 1, no? Tapos tawagin na natin ANOVA 2 yung pangalawa. Okay. Or mas mga data na ANOVA response tapos ANOVA SN yung tawag natin sa kabila. Okay. So again, source, SS, DF, MS, uh, FCAP, PVAL, Conclusion. Tapos we added two more, no? Sabi natin SS Prime and we added percent contribution. Uh, percent contribution, uh, for some reason, no, percent P yung uh, tawag niya. Uh, hindi ko rin alam kung bakit, pero usually P percent pala. I, I don't know what the P stands for, no? Pero um, P percent. Pero ganun na siya tinatawag. Maybe there's some meaning to that. No? Uh, try to look it up. No? Okay? So, we have, ang source natin is A, B, C, and D. Kasi four factors tayo. Hindi natin tinitingnan yung interactions. Uh, tapos, meron tayong error and um, total. Okay? So, notice na sobrang dami natin degrees of freedom dito. No? So, this is uh, 9 experiments times 3. So, that's 27. 27 lahat ng uh, observations natin. Minus 1, that's 26. 26 yung degrees of freedom natin. Okay? So, sobrang uh, magandaming excess tayo. So, wala tayong issue dito. So, we don't have to pull as compared to this one where we had to pull kasi kulang yung degrees of freedom natin. Okay? So let's first compute that one muna. Sum square total is just, again, this never changes. No? It's sum square ng lahat ng observations divided by 1. So pwede natin hindi na ilagay. No? Minus correction factor. So we have the SS right here. Tapos degrees of freedom, it's count nitong lahat ng observations minus 1. So that's 26. Our error natin is just the sum. Oh, no, sorry. This one minus the sum. And we can just drag it. So, hindi uh, pa siya nagbago na kasi wala pa tayong in-input dito. So, um, SS equal lang to dito, 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 and this one. Because degrees of freedom... Um, there are three levels no, per factor. So that's three minus one. So kaya two siya. Degrees of freedom natin. And notice na sobrang uh, malaki naman yung degrees of freedom for the error. So no need to pull again. So we compute for MS. That's SS over DF. And we can drag it down. Tapos F calc is equal to MS over MSE. And we place an F4. Para ma-fix siya. Tapos drag it downwards. Mayroon tayong F calc. Then we do P-Val. P-Val is just F this RT. And degrees, uh, this is our X value. Degrees of freedom 1 is the for the source. Degrees of freedom 2 is the denominator or the uh, error. And we can do F4 para fix siya. Okay. Drag it down. And we have this one. And we do conclusion if equals if this value is less than walang sinabi na, so let's just do 95%. Less than 0 0.05, then we say significant, else we say not sick. Okay. 
and we can drag it down. Okay. Now we can compute for SS prime. SS prime is yung SS ng source minus yung degrees of freedom niya multiplied by the MS error. And let's do F4 sa so MS error kasi ito drag natin to. Drag natin hanggang dyan. Ah, hanggang dito. Tapos yung MS error is just yung natira. No? So from the total minus sum nitong lahat ng mga pure. Okay. Now, if we do SS prime divided by SS total, we get the percent contribution. Oh, uh, I should have done F4 para ma-fix siya. So, drag it downwards. And kung tama yung calculations natin, and we can do percentage para ano siya, uh, let's do two, two decimal points. If you... Um, if you select this all, it should be 100%. Kung hindi siya 100%, again, something might be wrong with the calculation. So, okay na tayo. We've done uh, Taguchi 1. No? So, we finished it. Okay na tayo. So, we can notice na highest contribution natin is factor B. Tapos, followed by actually the error. No? Mataas yung uh, error natin. Okay? Alright. So, let's do uh, the next. No? So, Ang sabi natin is this is a ano no uh, for this particular problem sabi gusto natin i nagkaroon kasi ng thickness problem daw and tolerance natin is 10 uh, 20 to the plus uh, 20 plus minus 4 so sabi natin dito for this particular case uh, importante na makuha natin yung nominal value na yun therefore nominal is best ang gagamitin natin dito right so nominal is best na formula is this one. So let's just compute. Uh, I'll just copy this. No? Screenshot this. Uh, yan. Nominal is best. Si nominal is best ata yung pinaka complicated na formula. Okay. So this is nominal is best. So let's just, just paste it dito. No? Uh, I can't even remember this. No? So Mukhang ang best way to solve this, uh, we can do one one column lang, no? If you want to be neat about it, pwede naman ang gawin nyo is one column lang. Pero I think the best, the easiest way is uh, isaparate ko na lang si SM and si VE, no? Separate calculation ko na lang sila para mas hindi nakakalito. Okay? So, uh, SM is equal to 1 over N, where N here is the number of uh, replicates. So, that's uh, 3. So we can do 1 over 3 or we can do 1 over count. Uh, pero for this case, I, I'll just use 1 over 3. No? 1 over 3 uh, multiplied by quantity summation of yi squared. So that's uh, this value right here. Tama? Summation of yi is parang yung um, sum, sum ng, ng particular row na yun. Okay? Squared. Okay, so that's my SM. Oh. That was V equal, V sub E is equal to uh, 1 over N minus 1, which is uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, multiplied by summation of Y I squared minus SM. Okay. So, um, nasa loob yung yi squared, meaning is a square mo muna bago mo is a sum. So, we already have a formula for that, no? yung sum square. So, okay lang. Gamitin na natin sum square. So, is square niya muna bago niya is a sum. So, ito, sum square nito minus CSM, which is this one. Then we should have yung VE values natin. Okay? Tama naman. Alright. So now that we have that, pwede natin compute yung SN ratio natin. No? So, SN ratio is equal to 10 times log. And ito, this is... Uh, pag log usually based on yung ibig sabihin na, no? Pero si Excel kasi is 
um, if you place just log, kailangan mo i-input yung base number. No? So, what we do is we use the log 10 uh, formula. So, log 10 means that naka-base 10 ka na. Okay? So, we use log 10. And the number is uh, yung 1 over n. So, that's 1 over 3 times sm minus ve. So, that's sm minus ve, which is this one, divided by uh, ve, which is this one again. Tama. And tama naman yung parenthesis natin. No? Usually, dito nagkakamali yung mga students class no? kasi parang uh, mali-mali yung mga quantities. Mga ganyan. So, you just be careful about it. No? So, uh, I press enter. Oops. I think this is, uh, these are the correct values. No? So, let me double check kung same kami na nakuha dito sa ano. SN ratio, same naman, no? 22.8, 19.1, 13.9. 22 so, if I round it down, it's the same values dito. No? Okay? So, kailan tayo? Okay, so meron tayong SN ratio. So, from SN ratio, pwede na tayong mag-compute ng uh, response tables for the SN. Okay? So, magbubuo tayo ng two response tables actually, no? May response table tayo for the averages, tapos may response table din tayo for the SN. So, so um, ano ko kaya pwede ilagay? I think pwede kong ilagay dito, no? Yung isa. Response table uh, SN. So, I can do level 1, level 2, and level 3. Tapos i-add ko lang. So, we can just use the sum if function as well dito. No? So, sum if natin, same, no? Itong range na to. In fact, pwede kong i-copy ito, no? Yung first part. Ano, sorry. Pwede kong i-copy ilang ito, itong first part. Okay? So, if I copy that, sum if, pero instead of adding the totals, gusto ko i-add yung SN ratios. So, I can do something like ganito. Okay? So, ito yung uh, SN table natin. And let's do another response table pa, no? Uh, we need the averages naman. So, the average response table, medyo madali lang naman siya. So, uh, I'm just placing it under dito class, no? Kasi para isang column lang siya yung ABCD madali siyang makita hopefully uh, that makes sense no pero kung kayo if you feel that this is confusing gusto niyo gumawa ng sari kung mga if some of you might feel that uh, mas okay ilagay na lang dito tapos label kayo ng ABCD etc pwede din naman oh, wait kailan ko pala i-drag pa to pwede rin naman uh, there's no problem with that um but uh, if para mas madali, i ako I just like to ano no kumbaga i fall ko under the same uh, itong column header na to okay so let's do response table table lang pala ba naka plural to this is the response table for the totals response table for the averages naman so, we'll need this. So, we need the averages. Minsan, hindi na kailangan ng averages, no? lalo na pag uh, higher is better or lower is better. Kasi, uh, in a way, kung, kung yung total niya is mataas, then higher is better pa rin naman yun. Kung total niya is mababa, then lower is better pa rin naman siya na scenario. No? Ang kailangan lang tong responsible ng averages is when you have nominal is best. No? Kasi, uh, later on, you'll, you'll see na um, since we are targeting a specific value, then you have to average this para makuha mo yung uh, average na thickness per experimental run or per um, per level combination. Okay? So, kaya dito sa averages, uh, kailangan natin siya. So, that's 1, 2, 3 again. Tapos, ang gagawin lang natin is, eto, divide lang natin by, this is uh, divided by, ilan ulit to? 
3 times 3, no? 9 values. So we need to divide it by 9. Tama? Kasi each subtotal dito comes from 9 individual values. So if you want to get the average, then we divide it by 9. Right? Then we drag it down. Uh, so ito, wala na tayong uh, ano, no? uh, dollar signs na ilalagay kasi dire-diretsyo lang naman siya. Okay? So meron tayong 3 types of tables. No? May response tables tayo, totals. May SN table tayo and may uh, averages table tayo. So, right now, how do we use these uh, tables right here? Okay. So, we we need to uh, delineate between what we call as, and let me get back to you, you know. Dito, uh, kailangan natin yung tinatawag natin signal factors and uh, control factors, no? Okay. So, where is that? Uh, signal factors. So, ito siya, no? So, when we say a factor is if we if we assign a factor to be a signal factor then we are saying na it influences the process mean okay so it can influence uh, a signal factor can be a uh, yung opposite niya is the control factor no so there are cases where in si signal factor siya tapos control factor par control control factor din siya okay pero kumbaga when we are assigning these factors we want to have a goal in mind no so for example uh, etong factor na to, I want it to influence the process mean. Or based on the results that I have, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assigning it such that siya yung nakaka-affect sa process mean. Process mean being the response variable. So I want it to affect the process mean. Therefore, um, hindi, wala ko masyadong pake kung, kung nag-influence pa siya ng variability doon sa, sa kumbaga, run to run. Okay. So uh, usually pag sinabing signal factor it is used to adjust yung centering ng process mean no so whether centering means uh, finding a nominal value or centering meaning parang finding the optimum value okay so kumbaga may hinahanap kang process mean right so that's uh, what the goal of the signal factor is now yung goal naman ng control factor when uh, a factor is assigned as a control factor is that hindi siya nakaka-influence sa sa ano sa process mean pero ang gusto mo is mabababa yung process variability na so what do we mean by process variability so process variability is uh, if you look at for example itong replicate 1 replicate 2 and replicate 3 these are the same conditions tama kasi naka low lahat pero uh, minsan 27 minsan 31 minsan 28 okay so that is what variability means no Kumbaga, run to run, replicate to replicate, pwede magkaiba yung value niya. So if you want to be, uh, if you want this to be more consistent, then you need to uh, adjust your control factors. Okay? So yung control factors is kung sino yung, uh, kumbaga, makaka-reduce sa variability ng, ng products natin if it's a process no? or, or whatever yung gusto natin makuha ang response variable. No? Okay? So, how do we assign kung sino yung response and sino yung signal factors? Now, this is where yung magic word na it depends yung lalabas ulit. Uh, it depends kasi minsan pwedeng uh, signal factor yung isa pero at the same time control factor siya. No? So, um, if that's the case, then you need to decide kung uh, ano yung mas appropriate sa kanya no and this comes with parang uh, your experience with the process itself no so um ano bang magandang example hmm. wala akong maiisip na magandang example ngayon no pero um le 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 let's take this uh, itong example problem natin tas try natin to figure out kung alin yung magiging signal factors so the way the signal factors are determined is uh, just looking at the uh, ano no um etong conclusion natin so if it's a significant factor then it's a signal factor no kasi kung significant siya meaning nakaka-affect siya sa process mean right so yun yung main niya na ano so if it's a significant uh, factor dapat uh, signal factor siya kasi nakaka-affect siya sa um, process mean. Okay, so if we look at the atong table of averages, no, and we are looking for 
nominal is best. Tama? So, yung uh, ano natin dito, uh, kumbaga, signal settings natin sa signal factors natin is and uh, I'll just uh, uh, hanapin lang natin yung ano, no, best settings based on this uh, averages. So, best setting is, di ba, ang target natin nominal values is 20 plus minus 4. Therefore, kung sino yung closest to 20, siya yung signal settings natin. Tama? So, ang closest setting dito is C, uh, A3. This is, ang closest setting dito is uh, C, B2. Tama? Ito, B2. This one, ano yung closer? C19. C19, no? So, B, C2. And dito naman, ang closest is uh, 19 din, no? Tama? So, ito, C, D3. So, uh, but we take note na itong si, ano, si A is not a significant factor. So, meaning, uh, kahit anong adjustment pa to, um, based on, sa, on, the, on the, the, the results of the design of experiment, kahit anong adjust mong gagawin dyan, um, most likely, hindi siya makaka-affect sa magiging uh, response variable natin. Okay? Tapos, dito, ito yung tatlo na magiging ano natin uh, kumbaga signal factors natin because we know that they are significant factors na kung babaguhin natin siya kuwari ita-target natin is i-D3 natin siya most likely masi-center talaga niya yung process natin because uh, wait lang ha? may mga <laughs> may nagka kampanya dito ayan dumaan na so eto most likely, ito yung magiging signal factors natin. So, if you want an optimized setting, then dapat naka D3, C2, and B2 siya. Alright? Now, dito naman sa ano, sa if you want the control settings, we look at the SN table. Okay? So, sa SN table, if uh, kung, baga, kung gusto mo ma-reduce yung variability, dapat hanapin mo yung highest signal to noise ratio again highest signal to noise ratio tayo parati no whether it's lower is better higher is better or nominal is best yung highest signal to ratio parati yung tiniting natin so if you look at this highest signal ratio is a2 uh, b3 ano ah, no sorry b2 this is c1 eto is d1 so if you want the uh, highest na ano, kung gusto mo na um, ha, kung baga lowest variability dun sa process mo, kung mari, gusto mo talaga consistent uh, yung, yung, yung replicate to replicate, consistent yung napoproduce mong um, results, then you need to adjust it according to this control settings right here. Okay? So ang th the, the thing is, we know that B2, C2, and D3 is, um, or we know that B, C, and D are significant factors. So, uh, alam na natin na sobrang taas ng, um, kumbaga, mat mataas yung effect niya doon sa uh, yield natin. So, pag-center ng process mean. Sa pag ng 20 plus minus 4. Therefore, it is good engineering decision na gawin natin siyang signal factors. So, hindi natin susundan itong control settings niya. Yung signal settings yung mas appropriate. Pero, uh, nagkatawa na dito sa signal settings, ang, ang control setting niya is also the same. No? So, uh, what gives you the closest to 20 is also what gives you the uh, most, the least variable na result. So, ito, maganda to. Pero ito, may conflicting siya. No? If you choose C2, siya actually yung most variable sa kanila. Kasi lower signal to noise ratio, mas variable. Okay? So, eto, um, sometimes you have to decide no, kung mas bagay ba siya na maging control setting or mas bagay ba siya maging signal setting. So, again, comes with experience. Siya, no? Pero for our case, we always prioritize signal factors first no? or yung signal setting. So, eh, kung signal factor siya, then you choose the signal setting. Now, dito si A3, again, sabi natin, uh, hindi siya significant whether you pick uh, A1, A2, or A3, um, most likely wala siyang effect doon sa 
uh, doon sa process main natin. Therefore, pipiliin na lang natin yung setting kung saan pinaka mababa yung variability niya, which is the highest signal to noise ratio. So, yung magiging final setting natin would be A2, B2, C2, and D3. With our uh, signal factors being B, C, and D. Tapos yung control factor natin would be RA. Okay? So parang ganyan yung magiging parang final conclusion natin. Okay? And let's double check na kung same time na nakuha dito. Hmm. Ay, sorry. Kailan pala natin? Uh, wait lang, ha? Same tayo, no? A3, A2, B2. Same ba tayo? We have A2s S, and B2, C1, D1. C1, D1. A3, B2, C2, D3. A3, B2, C2, D3. Ay, sorry. Okay. Um, dito, no, kailangan natin i-determine pa if uh, control factors nga ba yung uh, na napili natin. No? So, um, we need to do another ANOVA pala. Uh, kaya pala sinaparate ko to, to response kasi gusto natin ng ANOVA SN. No? So, let, this is our second ANOVA. So, we have source, SS, DF, MS, FCALC, And we have PVAL and conclusion. We can also add SS prime and P uh, percent contribution. No? Pero I think it's unless, uh, not necessary anymore. No? So we do A, B, C, and D. Tama? Then we compute for the, um, the SS values for this particular case. So... Ito, um, lagyan ko na lang ng isa pang ano, no? We add one more table here. Uh, or insert. Okay lang pala. So, uh, dagdag tayo ng isa pang ano. Um, para mas maganda kung sabihin natin na optimized. Mas optimized dito. Yan, mas 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 uh, ano yun. Nag-make sense ano. Kung baga optimized setting based on averages. Ito, as optimized setting based on SN ratios, ito yung kukunin natin. Pero we still need to compute if control settings siya. Kasi kung hindi siya control setting, then useless na i-target mo tong ano no. Okay? So, um, ito, si SS value niya is equal to sum square nito minus the correction factor. no And we need an another correction factor dito pala. So, CF natin is equal to sum square and we we are only dealing with SN ratios, no? So, um, sum square nito, ah, no, sorry, sum nito, kasi this is correction factor, grand total squared um, divided by yung count, no? So that's our correction factor. So our SS now becomes sum square nito. And each ito, um, SN value only comes from one observation. No? So uh, kung baga, hindi kasi replicated itong SN ratio. 
Tama? Kumbaga, yung, yung, ano, sorry. I mean, etong 22.77, hindi natin siya pwedeng sabihin na galing siya sa R1, R2, R3. Galing lang siya sa isang, kumbaga, one row, one SN ratio siya. So, in this particular case, etong level 1 na to, etong subtotal na 55, comes from only 3 times 1 na na individual values. So the three values from 55 comes from itong 22, 19 and 13. Pag pinag-add mo 'yan, gives you 55. 72 comes from 19, 27 and 25. So ang divisor natin dito would just be 3. Okay? So hindi as opposed to dito sa kabila, ginawa natin is over 9 kasi 3 replicates siya. Pero etong SN kasi hindi sila replicated, no? Isa lang yung isa lang yung observation natin per row dito. Therefore, dapat uh, over 3 siya. Tapos minus the correction factor. And let's place an F4 sign or a dollar sign para mag-fix siya. And we can drag it to the right. Okay? So, notice na ito class, uh, magiging kulang na yung observation natin dito. No? Kasi if you do this SN, uh, the second ANOVA table, the SN table, so this becomes equals, this one equals. And if you take the total, so we do error, total. Total is sum square ng lahat ng observation, which is this one, minus the correction factor, which is this one. Diba? So we have this value right here. Tapos if you add this, all of these values right here, equal siya dito sa value na to. So if you double check, 149.83. And in fact, if you do the math. No? So, if we do comp computing lang na ganito, minus sum, ito, this should give you zero. No? So, my counting uh, discrepancy per uh, essentially is zero. No? So, zero siya. So, zero siya dahil uh, yung degrees of freedom mo dito, if we compute it, so this is uh, degrees of freedom natin dito is nine minus one. So total is uh let's do count. Ito minus one. So that's eight. Tapos eight. Um, eto degrees of freedom niya. It's still the number of levels no minus one. So three levels minus one gives you two. And if we drag this to the right, you'll notice maging zero din to pero bakit siya naka yan so ito what's wrong ano ito yan so ito you'll notice na uh, zero zero yung degrees of freedom natin, which is the same case na na-observe natin dito no yung kanina before we pulled so therefore para ma-solve natin to yung ANOVA table na to we need to do pooling no And in this particular case, medyo madali lang mag-pull no? kasi sobrang obvious kung sino yung mataas yung SS versus sa uh, mababa. So you'll notice na itong dalawang two relative to the other uh, factors, sobrang baba niya. So we can just uh, pull this. So this now becomes equals this one minus. What? And again, if you check, pag pinag-add mo itong dalawang to, That gives you 2.9809, which is the same value as the error. No? Kasi pinul mo siya papunta sa error. Okay? So, pagkaganyan, then you do MS. Uh, let's just delete this. So, we do uh, SS over DF is MS. Tapos FCALC is, oh, no, so, kasama ito pala ito. MSE. FCALC is MS over MSE. And let's do F4. Copy natin to. Tama. So, F calc. Yan, they do PVAL. That's F this RT. Degrees of freedom 1 is numerator. Degrees of freedom 1 is the denominator, which is this one. F4. Okay. So, if I copy it. Tama naman. So, ang conclusion natin is, uh, pwede nang hindi natin i-F formula to. Obvious naman siya less than 0.05 silang dalawa. Therefore, significant silang dalawa. Okay? So, therefore, ang control factors natin actually is uh, A and D, no? So, we can say A and D ang control factors. Pero, kumbaga, we can't, 
again, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na uh, signal factor can be a control factor. No? And in this particular case, CD, it both affects the process mean in a way na nasa center niya yung process mean, pero it also affects the process variability. But uh, ang unfortunate lang dito is that si the setting that gives you the highest or the lowest variability is not the same as the setting that gives you the highest na uh, average tama or, or or the 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 setting that gives you the correct average which is the the center bean so ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na again it, it becomes a toss up no kung uh, which which do you value more So on one hand, pwede mong i-argue na, okay, so gagamitin ko na lang si B2, uh, gagamitin ko si factor B and factor C to center the mean. Tapos gagamitin ko na lang si D to, um, hindi ko na gagamitin siya as a signal factor, gagamitin ko na lang siya as a uh, control factor para ma-reduce yung variability. Pwede, you can decide on that, no? Pero, again, that takes experience. And uh, for the purpose of this class, no, um, ang ang general rule na lang natin is if it's a both a signal and a control factor pipiliin natin siya na maging uh, sa optimized setting no sa final settings pipiliin natin yung set setting niya as a signal factor okay so pwede siguro control factors uh, para mas ma specify no i'll just say parenthesis d na lang pwede sabihin ko na ganyan just to indicate na Although it's a control factor based on ANOVA number two or the signal to noise na ANOVA, um, I'm choosing it as a signal factor because it's more important to me. Parang ganyan. Okay, so um, na nagigets pa yon. May questions ba about that? Wala naman. So medyo malinaw naman. No? So Uh, siguro class no in practice yun lang yung medyo mahirap na part yung pag-decide kung signal ba siya or control factor pero um, in general no I think Taguchi 1 and Taguchi 2 hindi siya ganun kahirap or tama ba hindi siya ay, hindi ko pala masabi din baka mahirap din siya uh, Rayo uh, for those present right now Kenneth and Shane would you say na mas Madali tong Taguchi kumpara sa previously na discuss na natin. Or mukhang mahirap pa rin. <laughs> Actually, oh, magandang observation 'yon, Kenneth, no. Parang kung magtataguchi one ka, kung hanggang dito lang no, yung ANOVA table, parang mas madali nga siya kasi mas konting yung kailangan mong uh, runs. So that's a good observation ano no. Kasi hanggang 8 lang siya therefore kumbaga technically parang table of signs din to no. If you if you really think about it parang uh, table of signs lang din siya but instead of negative 1 and positive 1 ang ginawa mo is instead of computing for contrast ang ginawa mo is nagsasum if ka depending on the levels. Okay? So um This seems easier, no? Taguchi one. Pero pagdating dito, baka medyo nakakalito na dahil sa SN formula. You'll have to think about SN formula pa kung higher is better ba, low is better, etc., etc. So, yun. So, uh, let, let me just summarize, no? Kasi medyo na, 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 naguluan ako. Uh, naguluan tayo dun sa dulo. So, uh, ang ginawa natin is we computed for SN uh, ratios. Tapos, from the SN ratio, gumawa tayo ng panibagong response table, no? So from this response table, um, pwede natin makompute yung may sarili silang SS no? or sum of squares based on the response table. And because you have a sum of squares, pwede mo na magawa yung ANOVA table din niya from, uh, from the SN, from the SN uh, response table. No? So let me just uh, na dito no? para mas maliwanag ko. Let's call this as uh, basis. So lagay ko lang note dito para mas... Alina, no? basis for uh, this is the basis for signal factors. Tapos ito naman yung SN. Basis for uh, control factor. So again, pagka ang lumabas dito sa first ANOVA natin which is based on the first response table, no? So just the totals. Pagka ang lumabas na Um, conclusion is that it's significant then it is a signal factor okay 
Tapos pagka sa second ANOVA naman natin, which is based on the response table uh, using the SN ratios, ito yung computed SN ratio natin na column. Um, if significant siya dito, then that is, uh, then we consider that as a control factor. So there are cases wherein both magiging signal factor siya and magiging control factor. And there are also cases na magiging, ano no, walang bearing siya. Kung baga, kung hindi siya signal factor, hindi rin siya control factor. And in those cases, that means that whatever setting you choose, uh, walang bearing siya. No? So um, if, if that's the case, if you were to decide an optimized setting, then you can either just choose the closest, uh, the optimized value that is closest to the what you want, or pwede rin um, piliin mo yung, uh, yung, yung, yung setting that, is, that gives you the lowest variability. It wouldn't really matter no? kasi statistically it doesn't have an effect. No? Hindi siya, it's neither uh, optimized, uh, it's neither a signal factor or a control factor. Um, some, some uh, ano no, if, if, you, if you think about it, ang, ang most, ang isa ding logical approach uh, to thinking about optimized setting um pagka hindi siya pag neither siya no kunwari neither signal factor nor control factor siya is you choose a setting that that is most economical so for example uh, let's just say no um uh, let's say ano to uh, yung factor A kunwari lang ang lumabas na result is well lang <laughs> ang ingay talaga siya <laughs> nangangamba niya Ayan, wala na. So let's just say na ano no, uh, ang sig ang factor A hindi siya signal, hindi rin siya control factor. So kumbaga non -sig not, not significant siya dito, not significant din siya dito. Tapos factor A is something like uh, uh, a percent uh, amount of uh ubang maganda. Let's just say amount of gold siya, kunwari, amount of gold. So if hindi siya signal factor, hindi rin siya control factor. Tapos, yung amount of gold does not affect your response variable. Mas economical, nababaan mo na lang siya. Pili ka ng setting na pinakamababa. Tama? Kasi, kung baga, hindi naman siya nakaka-affect eh. Sa, sa process ko. Pero, let's just say na importante siya sa, na kailangan talaga maglagay ng gold. So, kung hindi siya nakaka-affect, then you just place the lowest amount of gold na lang. Kasi mas economical yun. Yung mga ganong cases, no? Or let's say, kunwari, uh, temperature. Something mas, mas, ano, no? mas, mas, mas ma-imagine nyo. Kunwari, temperature siya. So kung temperature siya, tapos yung temperature is neither a signal factor nor a control factor, then you just choose the lowest temperature na setting. Kasi kung lowest temperature setting pinili mo, uh, dun sa available na levels, kung lowest temperature setting pinili mo, it means na mas konti yung nagagastos yung kuryente if it's an electric furnace or mas konti yung nagagastos yung fuel to to fire that furnace. Tama? So those are some of the things that you you think about to, pag, uh, when we're deciding. So kung baka kasi si Taguchi approach is a, kubaga, we can call it as an engineering approach talaga siya. No? So your decisions will be based on, kubaga, medyo flexible yung decisions nyo based on what your process needs. No? As a process owner, kayo yung nakakalam nun. And Again, it takes experience. So. All right. So, um, uh, some caveats dito in class. No? Itong averages, again, hindi siya totally necessary. No? Kaya lang siya natin ginamit kasi nominal is best tayo. So, uh, nominal is best. We want to have a target. Therefore, importante na mag-average tayo. Pero if it were a larger is better or smaller is better, uh, the totals, responsible for totals, will work the same no hindi hindi kumbaga kaya na niyang mag-give ma, mabigay yung same information as the averages uh, it just so happens na nominal is best tayo kaya tayo mag-average pero there's no issue then if you want to do averages okay lang din kasi you can still do uh, higher is better lower is better using averages so, dagdag uh, ano nga lang yun dagdag tables na gagawin mo okay so um ano pa ba yung medyo naguluhan no ah okay uh, isang ano no reminder dahil si SN ratio is a ano um, SN ratio is comes from just one column lang one column yun na po produce nyo so no replicates siya uh, therefore yung makukuha yung value dito you need to pull them no 
So, ang mangyayari kasi if you don't pull is 0-0 tong SS and DF. So, you need to pull similar to what we did here no? nung walang replicates. Okay? Tapos, again, itong optimized settings, hindi pa ito final settings. Um, ang final settings will depend on kung ano yung results ng uh, itong response, yung, yung signal factor mo, yung ANOVA uh, for the response and ANOVA for SN ratio. Okay? So hopefully, uh, paano ko ba ma sa so, ilalagay ko? I can place it somewhere dito na lang sa gitna. Ah, see, okay na yan sa dyan. So yan yung magiging parang final answer nyo. Alright? So I think okay na tayo, no? No more questions from the class? Okay, so uh, with that said, we can end the lesson today. Thank you for coming in. Shout out Shane and Kenneth for coming in today. Uh, hopefully, ano, um, sa next few meetings, um, medyo madami yung makaka-attend, no? Kasi FICO, um, to be honest, yung linear regression, tsaka si RSM, no? Medyo mahirap talaga siya. Naintindihin lang if you just read the modules. I think, um, kailangan nyo talagang uh, mag-attend ng ano, no? ng session, synchronous session para makapag-ask kayo ng questions. Alright? And just a reminder, no, not only to Shane and Kenneth, no, um, for all those listening sa ano, lesson na to, I, I've observed na konti pa lang yung uh, nakakasagot ng ano, no, ng mga modules natin. Um, if I remember cor correctly, yung ANOVA, let me just check the ano, no. So, hindi, hindi ko papakita, pero ang alam ko, most sa inyo hanggang dito pa lang ang nagagawa. Parang probability. Konti pa lang ang gumagawa ng hypothesis testing, uh, ANOVA, tsaka 2 to the K. Although yung 2 to the K, uh, this week lang na-release. No? So I would understand na kung, back, kung wala pa to. Pero yung hypothesis testing and uh, ANOVA, parang dalawa pa lang ata nag-accomplish. So baka lang ma, ano, no, maipon yung ano yung workload nyo so uh, try to do the uh, module assessments as early as nano para hindi naman kayo matambakan sa end of the sem right okay so thank you again class for coming in and see you next week friday ulit bye everyone